Hello and thank you for joining me today. I'm Jan Clothier of Thinking Stamping and I'm an independent stamping up demonstrator based in New Zealand. And today I'm going to share with you a card that I made with this set from the January to April 2023 mini catalogue called On the Farm, uh, which I bought for two reasons. Firstly, I grew up on a farm and secondly, I now have a grandchild and so I thought this might make some cute little things for her when she gets a little bit older. But in the meantime, I've been experimenting. So I'm going to show you how I made this baby card with it. Um, if you see anything that you like in today's session, um, any products and you live in New Zealand, you're more than welcome to shop with me. There's a link to my online store in the video description below and in my blog and Facebook page, the details of which are at the end card. And if you'd like a catalogue, drop me a message and I'll send you one. Okay, so let's get started with this little card um, and we'll start with what do you need? Well, obviously the on the farm set and the bundles with these lovely dies, um, which we'll look at a little bit later because we do use some of them. I've used a Daffodil Delight card base and it is, as always for me, cut from an A4 piece of paper, so it's 21 centimetres that way, that's the width of the card, scored at 10.5, and I've cut it at 14.8 centimetres tall. Now, if you're not a metric person, um, then just use your standard sized card base, because this is my standard sized card base. Okay, so a Daffodil Delight base. Um, the card front is cut half a centimetre smaller, so that's about a quarter of an inch if you're not using metrics. So it's 10 centimetres by 14.3, and you need one for the inside, which we'll put aside because we don't need it yet. And you need a second one for the card front, and as you can see, I've already embossed that, and I used the uh, gingham embossing folder for that because I liked the, sort of the sweet baby-like imagery that it suggests, you know, like baby blankets and, you know, little gingham dresses with smocking on, all of those sorts of things. Uh, but, you know, you can use whatever folder you like. So eventually that's going to attach to that. You need another piece of basic white to cut out that centre panel, which I've already done. And I used the new deckled dies for that. And I have used the middle one. So the seven, no, I haven't. I've used one, two, three. I've used the fourth size down. For that. You could equally use the stitched rectangle dies, that would look nice as well. So I've got that. You need a little piece of Daffodil Delight because as you can see you die cut out these cute little duck, little ducklings, mother duck and her ducklings. This, um, this set has all of the main images, I think pretty much all of the main images there are outline dies for it, but there are all these cute little other things including mother duck into three little ducklings. So as you can see, you don't need very much Daffodil Delight for that, just a tiny scrap. And I have also used some linen thread, which is a favorite uh, product of mine. And I used up pretty much the last bit of my last video. So a new packet there. And the colours that I've used aside from Daffodil Delight are Granny Apple Green and Fluty Flamingo. So let's crack on and get started. So the obviously the, the most of the action is happening here on this little deckled dec edged panel. Now I have gone into my stash for this sentiment. Um, I could have used, and I think it would work quite well, the From All of Us out of the set, because you know, you've got the mother duck and all of the little ones. So you could use From All of Us, but I was after a baby card. So I shot, I used my stash and I dug out this set all for baby, which was a big, big favorite of mine because I really like that Hello Little One sentiment. Now the one regret I had when I made this card was that I stamped the sentiment in crumb cake. And I, I think that I was thinking that I wanted it to match in with the twine. But on reflection, I wished I'd used black. So that's what I'm going to do today. And at the end, I guess we'll be able to see whether I was right or not. So I'm just going to stamp it up. Whoops, and stamp it. This is a test, it's like stamping at on stage. Uh, nothing quite so stressful as an audience watching to see if you can stamp straight or not. Okay, so it looks like I can. Now, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take a post-it note, or you could use um, 
a masking sheet if you have some of the new masking sheet. And I'm going to use my grid paper to work out exactly where I want to put that line. So I think there. And that's going to have two functions. It's going to hold that down as well as create a line. Now, is that straight? Not quite. So we'll come up a little bit. It's worth fiddling around with this bit because it will annoy me and probably you if you go to all this trouble and then discover that, in fact, it wasn't a straight line. Right, so once you're happy the line is straight, you get your ink. I'm just going to use Granny Apple Green. I'm going to use my blending brush. And I'm just going to lightly go over that line. Now, it looks like nothing's happening, but trust me, it is. When you take away the masking tape, uh, the masking paper or the post-it note, whatever you're using to create your line, there will be... A lovely little soft haze of granny apple green in the background. So we'll just do that. Okay. Trust me, I know what I'm doing. She said with her fingers crossed. Okay, so we've added in the green. Now I'm going to take this little stamp here, this little flower from on the farm, and the memento, oh sorry, the yep, the memento tuxedo black. And I'm just going to add in a flower at the end, each end, and I'm gonna do one a bit lower. And now the moment of truth, because now we're gonna remove the paper. And yes, there is our little little line for our ducklings. The next thing we're going to do is to take my what's turned out to be my actual favourite stamp out of the set which is this innocent looking little piece of grass here. So I've already got that blocked up. I'm going to come back with the granny apple green and we're just going to stamp along the masking line and I want it to be Partly on and partly under. To make a nice little place for the ducks to walk. And then I'm going to colour in the flowers using stamping blends. So I'm going to use Daffodil Delight for the centres. Possibly got a little bit carried away on the amount of grass, but time will tell. Okay, so I'm going to use Fluty Flamingo for the petals. And because the placing of these flowers isn't an exact science, um, if you have some leaves still showing, Going to add in, you can colour in the leaves with granny apple green. Okay, I'm going to add in a bit of darker. And we'll finish off with, I can see here, I'm going to go for the dark one. Yep. Whoops, I want the, not the painter-y end, so I want the other end to just colour in. Those little leaves here. Yeah. Okay, so now we've got a nice place for our little ducklings to go. And they are very fiddly. So I'm going to glue them this way. I'm going to use my silicon mat. A little dabble of glue. I'm going to get my little ducks. My little ducklings. And I'm just going to use that old bit of old sponge and I'm just going to, actually I think I'll start with Mother Duck. Just do her this way. 
And then I need to find where my tweezers are. Okay, we'll just move that one out of the way. And there you go, Mama Duck. Okay. And then we better have a baby duck. baby duck and if you're doing if you're gluing this way with a sponge you don't get that oozy that ooze coming out when you put them on onto the card front which is always a bit of a risk when you're dealing with tiny die cuts like these it doesn't matter that she, you know that little duck's partly in front of that flower it's just giving us a bit of perspective okay and so now we've got our little scene with our little ducks. We're pretty much in a position to start putting things together. Now, I'm going to attach my ribbon, uh, sorry, my twine. And I want it to be about there. So I'm just going to put some stamp and seal. I would if it would come out. Some stamp and seal there. And there, and that is purely as a as a sort of a temporary holder for my twine. So I've got my twine here. I've got about where I want it to be. So I'm going to come across once. Twice. And three times charm okay so now I like to attach my string that way because it cuts down on bulk behind the panel and also you'd end up not using quite as much twine so and the other thing because it gives you a bit of wiggle room so you can go have I got it straight have I got it where I want it to be yep but because that stamp and seal was just there as a temporary hold when I go to attach it I'm going to make sure I put some glue over where the actual ends of the twine are just as a sort of a backup attachment because we do not want that to come off and fall apart when you give the card so we'll attach that to our daffodil delight Are we straight? Yes, I think we are. Now, if you're a bit worried what you, about how well that's going to hold, what you can do is you can get a glue dot or two, if you're, you know, and just pop it underneath there because we're not going to see it, just to kind of give it a bit more security. Or not depending now I did decide you've got you've got two choices here you can just glue that on but I wanted a bit of bit a bit more prominence to the to it so I'm going to use dimensionals and if you've watched me before you'll know that I hate things that are raised up falling and sagging so I am a profligate user of dimensionals so just look away if you are, are not. So I'll just quickly flip those off. And then we will have the joy of trying to get that straight. Okay. How are we going? Straight and centered. Are we straight and centered? Answer, yes, I think we are. So now we are in fact almost done. Now I'm going to do the bow. So I need, I like to use about 25 centimeters or so of twine when I'm using a bow. Just because I like to make sure I've got plenty for a generous tail. 
and plenty so that I, you know, because I've got fumbly fingers and so I want to make sure I've got plenty to make a nice bow with. And I'd rather waste a little bit and have to waste the whole thing because I never started with enough in the first place. So we'll tie that. Whoops. Try that again. Okay. And then we can just faff around and get it how we want. And then if necessary, do a little bit of a trim up of the bow so that it's as long as you want it to be. And the other nice thing about doing it that way is you can slide it around and get it in the optimum position. Now, the final thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add in some iridescent basic um, pearl pearls, just as a little bit of an embellishment. So I'm going to put, I think I'll put one there. And maybe. Got a bit of glue on my finger so things are sticking. Perhaps I'll put one there. And another one there. Okay. And so there we are, a cute little baby card made using the On the Farm set. And I don't know, I've got done it two ways, a crumb cake and a black greeting. Which one do you prefer? I don't know, I think I do like the black one. Anyway, the other thing we've got to do is the inside. Now, I'm not going to, to make one, but I'll show you what I've done. Um, I've just done, I cut out myself a couple of extra, a mother duck and a little duckling, bit of grass, and I'm just going to add that into the centre. Whoops. Here we go. Again, just a th little thin thread of glue. You never need as much as you think you're going to need. You want to avoid the ooze. And then... Pop it in, and there we have it. Now, that is the same technique that I've used for this card, also using the same set. You know, I've used a post-it note, made a, a, a little bit of a green haze, added in some grass, I've stamped in a cow, a bit of a cloud, and a sentiment. So it's a technique that you can use for lots of different things. Now, if you've seen anything you like today that you like the look of and you'd like to add it to your craft stash, you're welcome to shop with me if you live in New Zealand. There's a link to my online store underneath this video. And if you would like to ask questions, I'm always happy to respond and you can contact me through my blog or my Facebook page. And there are links to those in the video description below and at the end card. And if you've seen thing, and if you enjoyed today's video, then please subscribe so that you don't miss anything else that I do. Happy stamping, everyone.